I'm going to go quickly go through this uh, quick tour of K-Native. Uh, essentially, this is kind of uh, supposed to be a workshop. Um, so the first part, um, essentially, some a quick briefing about what K-Native is all about and all. Uh, that I will keep it quite short. Okay, so this is kind of a, a must slide when it comes to uh, uh, to talking about K-Native side. What K-Native is exactly about. So if you take a look at the website, um, what they say is Kubernetes, uh, K-Native is a Kubernetes-based platform to deploy and manage modern serverless platform uh, workloads. So essentially what this means is essentially you have this K-Native um, components uh, being deployed on Kubernetes. Um, is is deployed on uh, and re uh, dependent on uh, the Kubernetes platform. And um, if you go uh, go in further, right, yeah, you uh, you find out that this Kubernetes is essentially trying to provide a platform on top of Kubernetes. So why take a uh, why do we want to uh, take a look at this Kubernetes? So one things uh, one things for sure is. If you think about it, right, for a developer trying to deploy an application on Kubernetes, uh, just using Kubernetes manifest files and everything, and let's say if the DevOps team don't particularly help uh, out in that aspect, so for the developer, they kind of have to not only know about the application, but as well as all the Kubernetes prim uh, primitives and how this whole Kubernetes thing operate. So for a developer, it's kind of overwhelming uh, at first glance. And then um, on top of that, they have to learn a whole bunch of tooling just to get something deployed, um, like Helm, kubectl tools. So this Knative is is an attempt to create a layer of abstraction uh, on top of this whole Kubernetes uh, in order to simplify the interface where developers use to uh, deploy workloads on top of Kubernetes. So um, I mean, this is kind of a, almost like a marketing slide of sorts, but yeah. Um, so the thing is, uh, right now there are like one or two platforms that are ca currently deploying Knative on on production, and you can use those services. Um, so one service, uh, one potential service you can uh, try to use is Cloud Run. Cloud Run is based on top of Knative, so under the hood, it's running Knative. You just don't know it, um, and then uh, if you take a look at uh, what you would need to fill in if you are a developer developing on top of Knative, all you need to do is provide service name, um, container image URL, as well as um, which port your application is operating on, number maximum number of concurrency that your your application can handle, uh, those kind of stuff. So it's way more simplified as compared to what you traditionally need to do on Kubernetes, which is to create a deployment object. Uh, deployment manifest file, service manifest file, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is kind of a more simplified model for, and this is generally more for the simpler apps. So if you want uh, more complex apps, uh, right now, I mean, Knative doesn't exactly support it. Yeah. So there are two components for Knative. So um, the, uh, one of them is serving, and the other one is eventing. So serving is essentially trying to um, ha handle workloads that are meant for HTTP based, uh, that meant to handle HTTP based requests. And uh, for eventing is essentially trying to manage event based workloads. So for this time, uh, because this is kind of one and a half hours, so um, eventing is way beyond, uh, event eventing is like a pretty broad topic. So for this time, uh, we'll be just focusing on serving. So what's needed to run Knative? So as mentioned uh, in the like second slide earlier, um, Knative kind of runs on Kubernetes, but in order to get finally deploy Knative, uh, Knative is actually dependent on um, some sort of service mesh um, kind of constructs. So examples of that is uh, Istio, Glue, Ambassador, Courier. So this uh, li uh, list of uh, uh, components like continue to grow every day. So uh, with each new release of Knative, like a new component could be added here. So uh, these are all. So you can install uh, like Kubernetes, and then on top of Kubernetes, you get it still in, and then after that, then you can run Knative on top of that. So um, 
so to get started, uh, so we want to get our hands a bit wet to find out what this K-Native thing is all about. So first things first is uh, we want to get a quick labs account. So this quick labs account provides um, a free one month access to Google Cloud so that you can try things out. And then from there, um, we will, because this is like for, for Asia, right? So we want to do the whole thing from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we will try to spin up our whole Kubernetes cluster without relying on a GKE or any, anything. Then install Istio, install Knative on top of that. And then finally, we can experiment with Knative serving. So um, to get the one man access to Quick Labs, uh, so I uh, just need to follow these steps. Um, Okay, uh, in that case, then I'll just go straight to demo. Uh, I mean, I'll take you through the, the whole experience without um, waiting for this, uh, getting one month access and everything. So yeah, the, the process to get it is a bit more complex and a bit wonky this time, so yeah. So at the end of the day, if you go through the quick labs, you will get the one advantage subscription. Um, if you see on the slide, that will mean that you have your one month X, uh, one month free access to Quick Labs. So that allows you to go through the labs and give you some time to play around with um, Google Cloud Platform. So, um, so let's begin. Um, I'm gonna go and uh, show the demo for this. The first things first is to um, have a Google Cloud console. Go to Google Cloud. So what we'll be doing is uh, creating VMs on top of this, and then after that, um, creating our cluster, installing Istio, and then uh, installing Knative on top of that. So let's start with um, going to the link here from the, sli from the slides. So for the first step, which is the deploying the Kubernetes cluster, the first things that we need to do on Google Cloud would be to create our firewall rules. So there are three things that we need to set up. There are two firewall rules that we can set up, we need to set up. Then, um, then after that, we can then create our VMs. So for the first firewall rule that we need to set up would be um, the node port, which essentially refers to the Kubernetes node port. So Kubernetes node port is essentially one of the ways you can access the uh, services from the outside world. So let me create the firewall rule for node pods first. So um, over here, is, uh, you will specify like node ports. So essentially, any VM that is tagged with these node ports will essentially have this firewall rule activated for it. Then um, the next part we'll do is to set uh, source IP range to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0, which refers to allowing the whole world to access it. Uh, but this essentially, this is not meant to be a production uh, ready cluster, and uh, so I think uh, this is fine for now. So the next part would be to copy our ranges, port range. Copy it here, and then with that, we create our first firewall rule. Then the next part, um, the next firewall rule that we need to add is the 6443. So let's say if you want to access this Kubernetes cluster from outside, then we will need to add this firewall rule to access this port. So hold on. Uh, 
uh, so as usual, um, we do keep uh, API as the, the network target, and then um, for IP range, we set it to 0 .0 .0 .0 0, 0, which refers to the whole world, and then last part is to add which port. So that's that will be it for this. So with that, um, the two firewall rules are created. Then the next step is to create the VM with the firewalls, uh, firewall rules configured and as well as set it such that it has access to all Google APIs. So the access to all Google APIs is a particularly important part because essentially when we are trying to create our cluster, uh, we want our cluster to actually access um, the network capabilities uh, of this platform and it needs the API access to create that uh, like things like load balancer that those kind of stuff so this let's set the name of this um, instance to be test instance one um, in our case let's set this to four core 15 gigabyte memory for this instance allow full access and then for networking put cube API as well as node ports okay there with that we can create this so I just want to check that the firewall rule is really called node ports Okay, fine, no points. Then uh, we need to repeat this two more times to create uh, three instances. Usually for these kind of things, like people generally just use Ansible or Terraform to do this, uh, but uh, doing it manually this way, uh, you kind of get to uh, know and feel like what exactly is happening. Terraform, if I just run the Terraform script from here, just magic just happens. And instances are created without anybody understanding what just happened. Okay, that's the third one. So uh, one more double check for each of the instances to make sure that they have the uh, full full access to all cloud APIs. So this is generally not recommended, but since this is not meant to be a production ready cluster, uh, anyway, like even even if you want to do it this way, like the better way is actually to just create GKE. But yeah, that's uh, that's not in the scope for this uh, demo. So for test instance one is okay, test instance two is okay, and then test instance three. Okay, so we have our three VMs and all of them are ready. So the next step um, is to install Docker. So what we want to do is um, to SSH to each of the instances. So conveniently, uh, Google Cloud has um, a capability to allow you to SSH via the browser. So we just need to wait for it to transfer our keys over. Okay. So the next step will be to, to install Docker. And we have instance two that's also ready. 
and then instance tree also ready. Okay. First, we'll do update. I can't exactly copy this whole chunk because apparently um, after try after running through the command, right, you only run the up, uh, up, update for some reason. So I have to do it one by one for some of them. So the next step will be to install a whole bunch of packages that we need to run it for all of them. Then uh, the next step is to add our Docker repo. Then we need to do an app update in order to make it ready for installation. Okay, with that, um, then we go on to the final step for installing the container runtime, which is to actually install Docker. So this one will take a while. Yep, so with that, um, we are installing Docker. So essentially at this stage, uh, you can alternatively install other container runtimes like CRI, or rocket or something. Not sure whether rocket still exists, but yeah. So for the next step, after con installing container runtimes, um, then um, we will want to install uh, Kubernetes. And in this case, there are several options that we can use to install Kubernetes. Um, in this case, um, the example, the, the demo here will be taking you through kubeadm instead. So. For keep ADN, um, this is a whole chunk of code that we can use to install it. Let's see whether it's ready. Okay, so instance one is ready, two is ready, three is ready. Then we we'll proceed on to install um, Kubernetes. So for the for this step, um, this step we can actually um, skip it because it's actually done in the previous Docker step. And this whole bunch uh, can be skipped because for our instance here, it's actually Debian 9, so we can skip this. But if you are in Debian 10, uh, there, are some, there are some parts that are kind of depreciated. So um, this is kind of a way to patch up to make sure that the whole thing still works with Kubernetes. So for this step, uh, we'll just proceed on to get our app packages in. Then after that, running update. Then the next step after that would be to actually install kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. So the kubelet is the actual like uh, process that actually runs Kubernetes. Kubeadm is your tooling to help administrate a Kubernetes cluster, and kubectl. Uh, I mean, kubeadm is the one that help administrate the Kubernetes cluster, and kubectl is the one that you use to talk to the cluster. So that um, our kubeadm, kubelet, and uh, what's the other one? kubeadm, kubelet, and kubectl, they are all installed. And if you try to check on our kubelet, you will see that um, it kind of um, is in a state where it's failing continuously all the time. So essentially, uh, right now, it's in a crash, crash back loop. So we can, uh, so if we, uh, if we check that, just to make sure that it's installed properly. So in this case, you see that the kubelet is failing. It's not that 
it, Kubernetes is not working or anything. It's just that the whole thing is not configured properly yet. So there are a whole bunch of things that you know uh, we need to still do in order to get it, the whole thing set up properly. So the next step is to actually um, freeze the versions on of it on the machine. So let's run that. And then the next step is to set some sort of configuration to in order for it to work properly with the network plugins. So um, this whole bunch of instructions are actually available on uh, uh, on the Cube ADM uh, page. So if you want further details on that, you can. Uh, it's best to go there. So they actually like describe in full detail. Uh, what the actual steps they do, why they're doing it. So for this, um, for this, this is needed for one of the network plugins that we are going to use today, which is uh, WeaveNet. Okay, so with that, um, we finished running a whole bunch of commands to install Kubernetes. The next step is actually to set up all our configuration in order to get the Kubernetes running specifically for GC. So this first thing is to actually set our clock configuration to for which is needed in order to run the configuration that is needed in order to use it for on GC environment. So we need to add that file in. So the only uh, thing that we need to fill up here would be the project ID, which is, in this case, is healthy rarity. Rarity. Two, three, eight, three, one, three. You can actually get it from the URL here. So with that, that is for configuring the properties for GC environment. So we need to copy this over to the other two machines. Okay, so with that, the conf cloud configurations are done. Then the next bit is the Cube ADM configurations. So um, this configuration is specifically meant to run Kubernetes on a GC environment. Uh, if you go out in the in the wild, um, there are actually other Cube ADM uh, configurations meant to run on other cloud providers. So I think there is a like blog post that mentioned about how you can run. Um, Kubernetes on uh, digital ocean, uh, creating digital ocean um, VMs, and then like hooking up such that you run a if a digital ocean uh, load balancer and all. So for this case, um, this is a Kube ADM configuration to run um, a Kubernetes cluster on GC environment. Uh, the reason why we need this whole bunch of configurations so that uh, we can access our um, uh, Google Cloud Platform um, load balancer and all. So the only thing that we, uh, we need to fill up for this um, 
configuration is the search sense. Um, so we need to add our IP addresses for our machine for our that is meant to be a master. So this in this case it will be our instance one's uh, private and I, uh, public IP addresses. So we'll just need to copy this and copy it here. And then the next bit is copy our public address, copy it here. And then with that, um, the, this keep ADM configuration ready. So there's a whole bunch of them. Um, essentially, all of them are all referring to our cloud configuration, um, the file that we edited earlier. And then uh, the one thing that's kind of important is the uh, one of the extra arguments, which is the cloud provider. And the cloud provider in this case is GCE. So this kind of refers. Uh, so that within Kubernetes code base, there is this thing about the um, about a whole bunch of controllers that's meant to. Um, how do we say it? That's meant to contact Google, uh, your cloud providers APIs to create your resources. So in this case, let's say if we put this in, right, and then if we create a network resource like load balancer, it will contact Google Cloud Platform's API to create that load balancer on our behalf. So if you don't do this, essentially you, certain, certain resources will be restricted from us. So the, the earlier example that I mentioned, load balancer, if we don't add this configuration, the load balancer will always be stuck at pending. So, yep. Um, later, I'll show you some logs uh, on how that happens. So with that, um, that is for the master node. Then we need to configure our join cube ADM configuration. So the join um, configuration is uh, way shorter. So all you need to do is just to tell it where to connect to and where the master node is. Oh, I forgot A here. And this, in this case, um, we will be contacting our our master nodes um, internal IP addresses so that you don't you don't have to go through the internet just to access it okay with that that's done that's our join and then we need to copy it over to the third machine Okay, with that, um, all the configuration is done, the cube ADM configuration. So the next part is the next part is actually to actually start the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So the command that we are to run on the master node uh, will be this command, which is to uh, initialize it and uh, use the earlier configuration that we've been creating. So with that, then it does a whole bunch of valid, uh, validation. Um, warnings we can generally skip. So we'll just need to wait for this to set up. So you see a, uh, that it does a whole bunch of stuff as well. So in the meantime, while this is uh, running, we can copy the next command for the other two machines. So let me check.
it is done. It's still waiting. Let's oh I didn't copy it properly. Okay, hold on. Yeah, um sorry, technical error. Um let me take a take a while to to uh, debug this. So with that, we are retrying again. Um, let's wait for this. Copy commands over and get it ready. Okay, so I'm having this error again. Localhost health C. Okay. Mm. Okay, so um, in this case, it um, seems like I am having like issues with trying to set up the Kubernetes cluster from scratch. So I'm not exactly sure whether I copied something wrongly. Um, okay, but um, in this case, um, I'm going to skip on the step on creating the Kubernetes cluster uh, from scratch, because like it seems like I have an issue with uh, uh, I have issue with the scripts. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna just skip over the uh, Kubernetes and inst install installation from scratch. And instead, I'm going to go directly to um, Knative instead. So um, in the meantime, um, I mean, I will probably review the scripts again and then I will update that block. So instead, we're just going to try to do this instead. So we can go straight to the key native part and focus on that. So in our case, um, in order to get our key native up, we need to install it still. So we just go test cluster one, static version 1.15. Then we need to set our our nodes to have a bigger CPU. And then for the next part we need to do is to find Istio. Enable Istio permissive and then that's fine. Yeah, we'll be closing the 
SSH uh, windows here because the demo failed for this. So I'm going to jump straight to the Knative bit. So you just need to wait for the cluster to, uh, to set up. So um, while waiting for the cluster to set up, so essentially I will just go through the rest of the steps. Um, I um, like I apologize for not being able to uh, to show this. Um, I'll probably go back and debug on what's the issue and why the local host for that particular port is not accessible. So um, the next steps after doing that whole kube ADM would be actually to um, to run the command to install the network plugin, and then with that. We can actually uh, we will need to run a whole bunch of commands in order to debug and make sure that the cluster is working uh, as expected. Such as um, if you try to run an Nginx container, um, it needs to be able to run at least app update. Because if it can't, uh, that means that there's DNS issues and maybe the network plugin is not meant to run on that uh, cloud platform. And then uh, another thing that we need to check and make sure that it works is the load balancer. So if the, all the configuration above is done properly, it should create an external load balancer that we can contact uh, from the, from even up from our laptop. Uh, and then the, one of the other steps is to actually um, configure to make sure that G Cloud um, that we can that the VMs is able to uh, pull images from our own uh, project's Docker registry. So this in the case that we want to create. Um, we want to run services from our private Docker registry. So we can skip all these steps, and we can skip Istio as well. Um, Istio is essentially just installing um, our service mesh that Knative is dependent on. But because we are not, uh, we are not, um, we don't have a Kubernetes uh, that we created from scratch, so we can skip these steps. Uh, Essentially, these commands cannot be run if you run uh, if you create a Kubernetes cluster f uh, using GKE. Because um, if you try to if you try to do it, you will complain that uh, it's unable to access certain roles uh, that the uh, the class that the that is needed to apply the Helm chart. So we will skip all this step because we will be getting a Kubernetes cluster with Helm installed. So uh, with this, we have a cluster with its uh, Istio installed. We can con uh, connect to it. And we'll just proceed on to Knative, the Knative bit. All right. So this is big enough. Um, so the first thing to do is to check what's inside the cluster. Nope, oh, um, it's not connected to the cluster yet. So we need to run this command first. So this command essentially copies over the um, the configuration for kubectl to connect to the cluster. So with that, we can finally run this command. So you should list a whole bunch of pods, which includes all our Istio components. So um, if you run the the steps from the block up to the Istio, it should uh, come up with something like this, um, excluding all the security bits. So you'll see that every, most of the stuff that we need is running. So it's, that, that will be OK. So the next bit is to install Knative. So we'll just need to copy this command. So the first step it does is, is installing the um, the custom resource definitions on the cluster. So in this case, we'll be um, 
installing the CRDs for serving as well as monitoring. So that's done. Um, if you try to check the cluster right now, it will look like as though nothing happened because like essentially all it does is installing CRD. So essentially it creates new uh, types of resources on the cluster. So like previously, if you try to type um, get revisions or something, um, it won't exist. But then if you try type this CTL revisions, um, now you say no resources found. So it's a new type of resource that's actually available on the cluster now. Then the next bit is the actual running of the cluster, uh, of the Knative bits uh, components. So go back to the shell, just apply this. And now you'll see like a whole bunch of components being applied right now. Yeah, so you'll see like how um, there are various components on 4K native. Uh, so you can see like the list just goes on and on. So um, the next bit, uh, next bit is actually to make sure that everything uh, we will want to sh make sure that everything is working before we uh, proceed on with our uh, K native experiments. So with that, we can run the command to, to make sure that everything's working fine. Pause. So we just want to make sure that everything is in the running state. At least everything that's in the Knative serving namespace is in the running state. So that's done. Um, let's run again to make sure. So it, it's taking a while for the Prometheus pods as well as the Grafana pods to create, as well as Elastic. No, Elastic Search is fine. Okay, but in this case, we can still proceed on um, because those will take a while to to continue uh, to continue setting up. So the next bit is actually to configure our. Um, our IP addresses and uh, domains. So in this case, we are kind of doing uh, some sort of hack. Um, um, this is, uh, we are relying on this thing called xip.io. So we can just, um, it provides us a temporary uh, domain for us to use in order to play with this example. So first we'll need to edit our configuration. But before that, we need to get our our IP address for, for our Istio ingress gateway. So for our Istio ingress gateway, the external IP is this. So we want to copy this. This is essentially a load balancer service. Um, that connects this cluster to the outside world. So we'll want to copy this. And then we want to edit our uh, this config map called config domain. So we can just remove all the data here. Um, I mean, these are example configurations that, um, I mean, for now it doesn't apply to our example. So yep, let's delete that. 
and then we'll just add our IP address with the X IP. So similar to what this uh, blog post uh, mentioned. Then um, with that, we can save this. So that's configured. And then now we can proceed to experiment with it. So usually when it comes to uh, Kubernetes uh, stuff, right? So the first thing usually people just try, the first container that comes to mind to try out with Kubernetes is the Nginx container. But in this case, uh, because of certain issues, um, the Nginx container can be uh, used here because of the way um, certain volumes are mounted in order to extract logs from it. So we kind of have to depend on another uh, example um, service uh, application state. So fortunately, they provide a hello world example. So this is our key native um, YAML file that we that we expect that developers create. So instead of going through the whole hassle of trying to create deployment objects, um, services, uh, all those kind of stuff, so we just uh, what we expect is just uh, like developers just create this key native um, YAML file, and all they need to provide is image uh, for the simplest case. So let's copy this config uh, this configuration over. So with that, that is in, and then we can just do our normal command of kubectl just apply. Yep. So with that, um, the KNAT service is kind of created. So what we want to do is to check certain kind of uh, certain resources here. So the first thing that we will want to check is this thing called this thing called K, uh, K, K service, which is kind of different from um, Kubernetes service object. Um, so this K native creates this thing called K, uh, K service object. So we just check that and then K. Oh, okay, so yeah, so with that, that is kind of, now it says it's ready, okay. So certain uh, other things that we can check uh, and uh, take a look at would be to uh, see the list of revisions. So now we have one Hello World uh, Go application. Yep. So with that, we'll go back to our case service. And essentially, all this does, this all this application does, is to return um, a hello world text on a website. So with that, we just copy this link, just paste it here, then just enter. Hold on. So I'm not getting the address, uh, the DNS resolve. So hold on, let me check certain things. Ports are fine. So let me try again. Okay, copy. Is this here? Is 
still trying to resolve. Okay, that's fine. Whew. Okay, so with that, um, it finally connected. It finally resolved the DNS, and uh, this is the our, what the applications are uh, going to return. So essentially, this uh, key native uh, thing is essentially um, what we create. Uh, what we create is the key native um, YAML file, and then from that, it creates a whole bunch of resources like routes, revisions, um, and all that. And all those routes revisions are immutable, uh, immutable configurations. So if you try to go to keep, uh, if you try to edit those resources, um, those resources will get resetted back to their original version. So let's go back to the blog. Um, so this is just for um, a simple example, uh, trying to deploy a simple service. But let's say um, in our case where we want to have a service and we want to traffic split the service between multiple versions of the application. So let's say um, we have this like hello world service and then we deploy like multiple versions of it, like version two, version three. And then we want to load balance it between 50-50% uh, between version two and version three. Like how do we do that? So for Knative, um, we'll just need to edit that Knative file and then uh, Knative will, uh, will make that happen. So let's go to the hello world example. So in this case, we want to create, um, the, the first thing that we want to create is our uh, next two versions. So, uh, so we just change this configuration to version two, and then with that we just reapply again. That will create uh, another revision for our Knative service, and then if we edit once more and then change that to number three. We can then apply again, and then it will create a new revision. So if we try to access the site now, it should go up to version three soon, right? Version three. So what's happening under the hood is like um, this cube native. If we run this cube CDL get revision, it'll list all the revisions that's uh, actually available for our apps. So in our case, since we deployed the hello world example three times, now we have like three different uh, revisions. So let's say now we want to uh, load, balances, uh, load balance between um, version two and version three. So how do we do that? We just go here. Then the next part is to edit it with this traffic portion. Then uh, we need to get revision name. So revision name can be uh, obtained from the kubectl uh, get revisions. So I need to get back to the the shell in order to get it. So revision name is this. I can copy that. Um, this is generation three. So we want to load balances, uh, load balance two and three. Get 
So with that, um, the, conf uh, the configuration is done. We can reapply this. Okay, so that has been reapplied. So essentially what happens is now if we try to get um, revisions, you'll see that there's a fourth. It's not, there's no fourth? Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I expected that it's fourth. But yeah, so now if we try to access that link over and over again, we should um, toggle between um, version 2 and version 3. So if we do a few times. Yeah, two, three, two, three. So with that, um, I mean, if you if you proceed on to experiment with this, yeah, you can like have different varying um, varying examples, um, yeah, and then you can actually ensure and check that make uh, to make sure that they are both truly load balances uh, load balance fifty percent of the time going to version two and fifty percent of the time by going to version three. But let's say in our case where we have a development version and we still want our application to still go to version 2 and version 3 but we only want our developers or our testers to go try version 4 instead so how do we do that so if you go back to here or oh, hello world example and then we'll just add one more thing uh, which is uh, tag so we we'll just add tag. So essentially, tag essentially labels our traffic. So it provides a an a special URL we can access that version that revision with. So let's call this latest, and then latest revision. Latest revision as true. Then we put percent, we put it zero, and then in order to make sure that they are different, um, we want to set this to maybe six or something. So with that, the configuration is done, so we can reapply this. So that's reapplied. So if we try to we if we try to access this link over and over again, um, this link will essentially still load balances uh, load balance itself between uh, version two and version three. Yep, version two, version three. Uh, but then regarding the thing about latest, uh, the the latest tech that I was mentioning just now, which is suppose uh, which we want developers to maybe access or something. So. A special URL is actually provided. So what we can do is just add, append latest and dash, and then we can enter this, and then that should come up with version six. So yeah. So yeah, those are the like few features that are kind of interesting from Knative, where it allows you to load balance between versions of application. Um, and let's say if you have like special development versions or special test versions that you want certain people to access, you can provide them with special URLs. But an, another interesting aspect of this Knative is the capability for it to actually scale down to zero. So if we've been looking just now, we've been accessing this, um, these ports, uh, this service, right? So this service actually spins up uh, new ports under the hood. So if we do a watch here, yep. So if we let this run long enough, and if we ignore it long enough, it will start to disappear. So as you see, like uh, now the status is being uh, is going to terminating. So if there are no requests coming in. Um, it will detect like, hey, actually this port is no longer required, so it will clean up and remove them. So basically, if 
you have a cluster and you are kind of short on resources and you have these applications that only run once in a while. So basically this is one way you can you can um have a cluster that you can um use less of, yeah, save resources on it. Yeah. You don't have to have uh, one specific pod, pod running all the time. So with that, um, yeah, um, kind of, yeah, kind of done. Yeah, because I, I, I am guessing that the next demo, that one will be particularly hard to demonstrate from here. Um, yeah, because then requires so bad, um, uh, that requires like uh, trying to stress out this Kubernetes cluster and trying to see how many pods you can spawn uh, in order to see the scaling effects of Knative. But yeah, uh, from here it's a bit difficult. So yeah, that's it. Um, so if you want additional links, um, this is a excellent talk uh, by uh, Matt Atamel, like one of the uh, developer advocates. So uh, Google Cloud developer advocates. So he actually has a more excellent. Um, a presentation about all this kid native and he actually go into the details about uh, this serving and also about inventing as well. So yep, that's it. All right. Thank you very much.